So despite all of this, how did you avoid the victim mindset? Um, Because I feel like that's the path that most people would go down. And I think the best the best example of this is the sign on the door. And I'll I'll put it up on the screen for the people watching. Um, Attention to all who enter here. If you are coming into this room with sadness or sorrow, go elsewhere. The wounds I received, I got doing a job I love, supporting the freedom of a country I deeply love. I am incredibly tough and will make a full recovery. What is full? That is the absolute utmost. Physically, my body has the ability to recover. Then I will push that about 20% further through sheer mental tenacity. This room you are about to enter is a room of fun, optimism, and intense, rapid regrowth. If you are not prepared for that, go elsewhere. From the management. Um. And I know it brought you a a lot of attention, maybe more than you wanted at the time, um, from what I understand. Um, So how do we, how do we avoid that victim mindset? What did you, what kind of mindset did you have in order to not feel, have, you didn't want people to feel sorry for you. You you didn't want to feel like the victim. Yeah. I mean, the greatest, uh, the greatest gift you have in this life is a choice. You have free will. And so many people buy into this idea when bad things happen to them, they want to find somebody to blame. Uh, I call it getting stuck on the X. It's everything I speak about it, about it's it's the, the, my second book overcome is all about this concept. Uh, And when you're on the X, it's easy to focus on the negativity and the things you've lost. And that's what leads to a victim mindset. You know, this person did this to me, or I lost my job, or, you know, I've been injured or whatever it is. Um, I, I see that in society even expanding. I, I think we have an epidemic in the victim mindset in our country. Uh, so many people who are buying into this idea of race, creed, color, gender, gender persuasion, where I'm from, demographic, you name it, fill in the blank. And we're buying into this idea that I'm a victim and I can't be successful because I fit fill in the blank. And, uh, and that's just such BS. Um, because the problem with that idea is if you really do some diligence and, 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 you know, get past the media who wants to only highlight the negativity, uh, every now and then you'll find these amazing stories of someone who is no different than you who found amazing success. Why? Because they chose to get up and drive forward. And that, um, that is the difference. I wasn't going to sit there and feel sorry for myself. I, I, I knew, I knew that there was a chance that I could get wounded in this job. I mean, that was not, <laughs> that was not a revelation. Um, and I think I try and tell people that an overcome mindset is comprised of three things. Number one, awareness. Um, awareness that any given time, b- b- bad things happen to good people. It could happen to your family. It could happen to your kids. It could happen to you. It could happen to your business. You know, something so out of the blue that you never could have predicted. And if you live in this fake world that that'll never happen, you're you're not going to be ready for it. It's going to crush you. So if you can at least have some mental awareness, okay, I never want something bad to happen to my wife or my kids. I would never want anyone to get shot in the face. But guess what? It's going to happen to somebody else. And so now that leads to preparation. And some of that's just mental preparation. And then third part is action. You have to take action. You have to drive forward. You have to figure out how to get up. And that's what I did. Um, and that's how the sign came to be. And that uh, really shaped my mindset. The, the last thing I'll say in that is adversity is a gift. Um, I was probably more prepared at any point in my life to go through something catastrophic. And a lot of people are like, man, how did you do that? You, you just, it would have been very easy to lay in that bed and be like, this isn't fair. You know, I, I, I failed as a leader and I came back and I will admit in the very beginning, I did feel that way a little, but then I shifted that mindset to like, Hey man, you have all the tools you need because of what you went through before. So I try and tell people, man, be thankful for adversity, like navigate through it and grind and be bold and, and get to the other side because it, it's building an overcome mindset. It's making you better. So when you face further adversity down the road, you'll look back on that. You're building your adversity, your overcome muscles. And uh, I try and tell people, 
you can never build an overcome mindset if you have never flexed those muscles before. You need adversity to do that. So if you run away every time it gets hard, you're not going to be able to flip a switch and turn on the overcome mindset. It's forged in the fires of arch. Fellas, do you want your grooming routine to be a one and done deal? Well, the days of using the same trimmer for your face and your private parts are over thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped is now offering the ultimate package to trim both your beard and the boys downstairs using two separate razors because, I mean, why would you want to use the same razor for both? Um, and so in this package, you'll find the beard hedger. And what really sold me on this is that you can actually pick the setting that you want and so without even taking off this top part. So you just find the perfect length for you and then you're all set to go and trim your beard and it comes out perfectly. And then this right here is the lawnmower 5.0 and this is for the boys downstairs. You can get 20% off your order and free shipping if you use the code young and alive at checkout. Again, if you use the code young and alive at checkout, not only do you get 20% off, you also get free shipping on your order. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video.